You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. Hey guys, BCB here. Welcome to No Filter HD. I think this is episode 20, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, it's Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. And I um, decided to make this last night on Sunday because I realized I had nothing for Monday whenever that Atari show usually airs because I'm taking a break this week. So yeah, so I wanted to just bring you this quick episode of this. Um, I wanted to explore the Atari Vault 2 again, and I wanted to go and play some of the arcade games in there for you. So this is just going to be a quick uh, gameplay of each arcade game, pretty much, um, like a one and done on each of those games, just so you can see them in action. Um, so a lot of these arcade games are from, you know, obviously back in the day, um, 70s, 80s arcade games. Um, some of them were never released, and some of them were here for the first time, so pretty neat. So let's take a look at this. Now, I did just wake up, so I'm going to have my coffee while I'm talking. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to get through this, but I recorded this last night doing the commentary today on Monday, so you'll see me fumble around a little bit when I press start up Vault 2 because I always have to get used to the controllers. It doesn't come naturally to, to me how to operate through these games. So um, I don't realize that you have to hit X to go over there and choose the arcade on the left side. So you'll see me fumble around a little bit here. But this collection has some cool stuff in it. Um, it's got 5200 games. It's, of course, last time you saw we played all those M Network games on here, which is cool. And got some classics here for sure. So. Glad to see it. Um, I think I looked into some of these last time. Um, here I am trying to figure out the uh, controller again, so bear with me. <laughs> but um, Vault 2 is a credible collection on the VCS. Uh, definitely. I feel like it's very underrated. Uh, there's, there's so many games in here to play, especially if you like these old school Atari games. Um, which, if you get a VCS, you probably do. So... Um, last time we tried miniature golf, I didn't know what to do in that game, so this is one I think that was never released, so, but, um, yeah, there's, these arcade games, there are some in here, guys, that I'm just like, why, like, fire truck, I can't, I can't stand that game, it, it's got, it holds its place, of course, in, you know, the gaming history, but I, I'm just, I can't handle it. <laughs> so, you'll see me struggle with that here in a minute. But, um, just wanted to check in with everyone, see how you were. Hope you're doing well uh, on this Monday. I think it's Juneteenth today, uh, June 19th, 2023. Um, and, uh, yep, still messing with the controllers here, so bear with me. Uh, I do figure it out eventually. So, um, these, these arcade games here, there are some good ones, there are some clunkers, uh, but all of them, I feel, are a part of Atari history, right? All of them we owe, um, you know, uh, love to, to a degree, because they started that industry, really, and kept it going, you know, the arcade industry, so here we go. So, of course, we got the sports games, which I come back to in a little, little bit. Uh, I'm going to play some Avalanche. So Avalanche, I actually have on my um, Asteroids Arcade 1-Up Countercade. 
it comes in there. And what's cool about Avalanche is I didn't I didn't kind of realize this this game inspired uh, Kaboom by Activision, which is one of my favorite Activision games, um, where you're catching you know the bombs. Basically, here you're catching snow. And so Activision um, was well known for, you know, they were former Atari programmers that left to make their own company because they were getting the recognition they felt they deserved. So, and what they would often do is kind of copy or enhance already existing Atari arcade and console games. So as you can see here, they took this game and made it into Kaboom, um, you know, and improve the graphics and whatnot and um th this this game here though is actually really fun to me i actually like avalanche it's it's a lot of fun too i do prefer kaboom obviously a little bit more just because it's got more character but um this is the game that started it all really you know um and i really i really enjoy it um it does go faster and faster as you go as you'll see and it gets way more complicated as you'll see but uh, it's a fun game for sure. Okay. I think I'm just kind of messing around again with the controller. But the, yeah, that's one of my favorites. So ne next we're going to Canyon Bomber. Now, this game was released on the 2600 by Atari, as you know. And uh, it's definitely more colorful than the arcade game here, as you see. Um, it's kind of funny though. There, there's more graphic detail in this, but the Atari version is more colorful. Um, I actually like both versions. Um, there's something about this version that um, is satisfying. When you drop that bomb, uh, it's very precise. Uh, it makes that crazy noise. Uh, it's fun. But um, definitely, you know, this is the old school days of video gaming, so you know, you get what you get, but, um, I, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it, um, let me know if you have any memories of playing any of these in the arcades, I don't, I was probably one or two at the time when these came out or something, I was born in 75, so, uh, but definitely a fun one, um, I enjoy it, <laughs> So let me know if you guys have any plans today for Juneteenth. Um, uh, it is um, an important day for sure. Um, I usually have to end up working, you know, um, but I have taken it off before. Um, just because I work for the school district out here and sometimes they're closed. Um, I wanted to say, it says here, Juneteenth uh, is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the emancipation of enslaved African Americans. And um, I usually have, uh, well, I usually take this day off. I don't think I have it off though at work. Anyway, this game here, guys, uh, is so fun. Um, now, I, I think I played this maybe just once on here, but this is actually a pretty fun game. Um, I don't remember ever seeing this in the arcades. Um, it's possible it was a prototype. I'm not sure. I didn't do a lot of research into these, but um, it's a fun game. Basically, you're, you're, you're just bombing these submarines here. Um, I do like the backdrop. I think they're trying to show here the RK game had. Like the color backdrop. It's really pretty. So that's a great way to be chintzy on graphics is to be like, okay, you're underwater. It's blue, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, kind of a fun game. I didn't realize you have to move this thing down here at the bottom to actually get these to land. So here I realize it and start messing with it some more. But yeah, this is a fun one too. I really enjoy this one. Can't remember what it's called right now because I was talking before, but it'll show the title screen in a minute. But I do, I, I do like this one. It's a lot of fun. It's got character. It it reminds me of playing these endless kind of bomber shooter games when I was a kid. That was Destroyer, by the way. So Dominoes. Um, now I 
it's funny. I never really got into this game, but here, as you'll see, I start to kind of get into it. This this basically is the Tron light racing game, right? <clears throat> or Snake, as many people like to call it. That's kind of what this is. And this game, you want to block your opponent. You know, you, you have your set of dominoes here, which are kind of fragile and can fall over at any time. You want to block your opponent and go as far as you can. And whoever lasts the longest here wins. So I'm trying to block my the computer player there. There we go. Yay, I won that one. So it's kind of funny. This is a very simple game, but I, I actually did get into this here, as you'll see. Um, doing pretty well. I think I, I even win. Uh, so... So the computer is the white, and I blocked them unofficially. So I've got my coffee here. I'm trying to wake up, so forgive me if I sound a little um, groggy. So it's about to get really hot out here where I am. Um, they said it's going to be in the 80s and 90s today. I'm not looking forward to it. I've got... Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday now are my big days where I'm at both sites. And my internship um, ended last Friday, but I'm still doing it this 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 group that we do three times a week. But I'm getting paid for it finally. So, um, but that is Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. So, um, and I do have to work those days too, my other job. So. Um, but it's kind of cool. It's going to free up my Friday night. It's going to free up like I'll be getting home like at three, like at a normal time on Friday now. Um, it's going to free up a lot of my weekend. It's going to free up my Tuesday, obviously, and my, um, yeah, Tuesday and Friday and the weekend. So this, this group lasts about 14 weeks or so. So I'll be doing this a while. Um, probably until I get my license and take my test. I have to take my four my four hour test, which I'm not looking forward to. But um, yeah, this game is fun. I like it. Um, it's very basic, but it basically, if you think of it as snake, you can get into it. Um, so let's move on to fire truck. Now, this game I hate with the passion. This game, while it's got good graphics, I just I don't appreciate the gameplay of it. Um, this truck is very sensitive. Like, it's easier to drive, like, a semi through a china shop, I feel like, than to steer this thing. Um, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I do like the style of the game, though, however. I mean, look at this antiquated kind of art on this cab on the side. It did have volcano buttons, as you see. Um, I like how they did that. But this, yeah, I'm just not a fan of fire truck at all. I just, by the time you get there, the city is going to be burned down. I mean, this thing, look at this. Um, I, I actually think that you could be front or the back of this thing and maybe two players. And the arcade version, I think two people played this at the same time. I couldn't imagine, um, you know, it is what it is. I'm just not a fan of fire truck. It just, it, in my opinion, it needs some work, but, um, the, the controls, but the graphics of it for the time are pretty good. Actually, I think. Look at the side. It says lit for lit for hard track, unlit for easy track. That's kind of weird. Yeah, see, I think on the side it says front and both and rear. I think you, you could control either or with the buttons here. I'm just, I, I don't even care. I just want to get out of this game. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but I tried. Maze Invaders. Now, this game, I think, was on the Atari 50 collection, and I was freaking out because I felt like I'd never played it before, but here it was in the Vault 2, and um, for some reason, I don't do as good as I do on the Switch with that controller, which is weird because I, the Switch controller um, sucks to me, but um, oh, I think I was using the 
the uh, Pro Controller with that, but when I played it. But um, I love this game. Now this game, from my, from, this is from my memory, I think it was never released because it tested badly, but I actually love this game. I know my friend MockingJYD likes it too. I think that was him, or Mr. Postile. We were going on and on about how we liked it, and oh my god, we never played it. And here it was in the vault, and I, I guess I just never realized it was in the vault. I do like the little side mark, the little side art they made for this. It, it was probably just for this this release, since this was not made into a cabinet, from my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I I actually like it a lot. It's fun. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Beanie Bopper, the character that's an Atari 2600 game. The character looks similar, and you kind of shoot the same, but um, the gameplay is different. Like it's not laid out like this, but um. It's really sensitive here for some reason. I keep finding myself sliding into the enemy um, using the Atari um, modern controller. I call it the Pro Controller. This is my favorite level here. I like how these change, kind of like in, um, in Ladybug a little bit, I think, or Mr. Do or something. It reminds me of other games. It's, it's very derivative of other arcade games. But... Um, but, I mean, this one definitely has character. It's unique. I'm surprised it tested badly. Maybe it was too hard for some people. I don't know. But I enjoy it. Let me know down below if you also like Maze Invaders. I think it's a underrated classic, of course. Um, and, uh, yeah, it deserves to be played. It's, it's fun. So, moving on here, we go to the next game. We have Monte Carlo. Now, this game is very kind of similar to Fire Truck. You could tell it was made around the same time, like the uh, the crash animations exactly the same. But um, I didn't realize you have to shift into gears until I started going. So you'll see me shift into second, third, fourth gear, all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, um, it's an interesting game. Uh, I could I probably like this more than Fire Truck just because there's less crap in the way. Um, and. And you'll see me play it again, trying to get a higher score. But anyway, here's some gameplay. You are watching Ballistic Coffee Boy. So I am back, you guys. Um, had to run to the restroom and pause real quick, but I uh, just wanted to say, um, I took a look at my school calendar. I'm actually off today. Um, I don't think we were always off on Juneteenth. I think it happened just in the past few years, so I'm excited I'm off today. Not just for being off, but to celebrate Juneteenth, of course, but uh, just relieved. So this game um, is, yeah, this game's a lot more fun than Fire Truck to me. As you can see, some of the graphics are the same. Like, I think the stuff on the side is the same. This may have come around around the same time. I think it said 79. I was like four when this came out. I don't remember seeing this. Um, I remember going to arcades and I was like five with my dad sometimes. Um, but I don't remember seeing it. Now, this game here is weird. It's kind of fun, though. This game, it's supposed to be pool. But basically, you're like knocking. I didn't realize till after a few minutes. You're actually knocking these balls into the holes yourself like the ball doesn't stop you like move it around with your with your joystick i thought that was kind of strange unless i'm playing this incorrectly but uh it makes it kind of fun though i think um it makes it kind of a different variation of pool um and i really like it it's unique i think that guy on the right side is in the mob he's gonna kick my ass or something but uh <laughs> it's a lot of fun i'm not sure if i'm even playing it correctly i'm just knocking around balls um, now here I start to realize that I'm in control of the, of the white ball here. See, I'm knocking, trying to knock these into the holes. I had no idea that you could control this. This kind of make, makes pull a different game, right? When you can control the uh, cue ball, you know? <laughs> Definitely an interesting game. And there's two players too. This might be fun to play with two people. But, um, yeah, interesting one for sure. Yeah, 
I think I get pretty far on this and getting all the balls in this time. But yeah, there's a wide variety of arcade games on here on each of these vaults, one and two. This, of course, being Vault 2. Next time, I will take a look at Vault 1's arcade games as well, because I know I haven't done that yet. But I want people to get um, a broader view of these two collections. They're great. It's got arcade games, it's got Atari games, and it's got unreleased games, it's got popular games. So it's got all kinds of games on these collections. I love them. This one, of course, also has the M Network games that you saw me play last time. But, okay, I got a 34. Not bad. So, I don't know if I was playing that right, but that was fun. So, um, that was Pool Shark. Skydiver. Uh, now, this game is kind of like a uh, human cannibal to a degree. Basically, you're dropping these guys. Um, you're trying to land them on your colored landing area. And you have to deploy the parachute. I realized about halfway through. See, like the computer did over there. You'll see me just toss out a guy and he dies because I don't realize you have to <laughs> you have to deploy the parachute. Oops. Three misses per player. This is actually a fun game too. I enjoy it. It's just hard to deploy that parachute right at the right time. I kind of prefer Cannonball. It's a little easier. But the graphics on this one are just slightly better. So... Yeah, don't do good at this, but it was fun. Try. <laughs> Let me know if you have any experience playing this in the arcades. I don't remember seeing it. It's one of these older games, I guess, right? Games our dads played or something. Man, that computer's good at this. Anyway, uh, I, I would love to have just an arcade just full of Atari arcade games, right? That's kind of what I wanted to do with my uh, with my uh, New Wave Toys micro arcade collection. I'm just getting the Atari games pretty much. So this game here, um, as you could tell, very much also takes after Fire Truck and that other game we played. Um, very similar. They must have been sequels or must have been around around the same time, like late 70s, but the graphics are kind of similar. Uh, and this one, you, of course, you shift gears just like in that other game. Is it Dune Buggy? And, uh, yeah. It's a lot more fun than Fire Truck, for sure. Fire Truck, I can't handle that, but I, I could do this. Of course, the Sprint games came later. This, is this a Sprint game? I don't know. I didn't see the title yet, but um, yeah, it's fun. I do remember seeing the Sprint games everywhere in the 80s, in the early 80s. I remember seeing them everywhere. Putt-Putt, the mall, at Tilt. Um, I remember playing Sprint one time, and I lost a quarter after a couple of tries, and I, I was so upset that I, I, I think I cried. That's how young I was. Uh, maybe like six or seven. I can't remember. Didn't do that well at it, um, and my dad got was like he didn't have any more change, but he used to take me out sometimes on the back of his shoulders. He would put me on his shoulders, you know, where I was like sitting um, on his neck basically, and he was holding me. That's how little I was. And we walk around arcades, and I remember seeing games like this. Um, that was my first experience to arcades when a never dad was holding me on his neck. Um, anyway, <laughs> lots of memories. And yesterday was Father's Day, of course. So, um, happy late Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Happy Juneteenth to um, everyone, really, because slavery is terrible. Um, it's a great, uh, it's a great weekend to celebrate for sure. But um, yeah, my first memories of arcades. Dad was walking around with me at Tilt in the mall. I think it was Northeast Mall in Hearst. Um, they used to have a huge arcade as well in the '90s underneath. The food court, they expanded that and made that a, a, a arcade. Now I don't think it's there anymore, if it is. Or it might be something else, like offices. But back in the 90s, it was an arcade. And we used to go under there. It was so fun. And it was a huge arcade, actually. And um, I'm, I'm sad that it... I'm sure it's gone now. The, the mall is still there. It's a popular mall. 
actually, in the area. All the other malls died and that one stayed. It's pretty big. But it's got a lot of anchors, you know. But the arcade underneath, um, I remember going there um, in the 90s as a teenager and having lots of fun. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was Tilt. I think it was just an arcade they had at the mall. But back before that, they had a Tilt. And Dad would take me. And I, I believe it was Tilt. And I remember being on his shoulders really tall and you could see the gunk and the dust on the arcade machines. I remember that. I remember guys fighting over asteroids. I remember, um, anyway, so these are the sports games, uh, Atari baseball. I'm going to give these ones a quick go. I'm not a huge fan of these sports games, but I want you to see how they look. I actually appreciate how they look for the time. I think they were trying to make these engaging as you can see the different lights on the sides you could control, but I'm just, I'm not a fan of these sports games. I'm just, but I, so I just want to show you what they look like. With that being said, however, I think that these games really show, are, are like they really show a nice variety. And um, I appreciate them all, even these. Um, it's nice to have them here. I think they have like baseball and basketball as well and football. And I do play a little bit of each. I wish they had like golf though and skiing or something, but um, this is the early days, so. So let me know what you think about baseball, Atari baseball. This looks like it was a cocktail table or, yeah, it was. Basketball. Now this game, I could get into this if I had some more time. I played this last night late before I went to bed, and I just didn't have any patience, but um, it, I guess probably could be home of two people, I'm sure. Um, of course, I played it by myself. I, I, I think it's a, yes, it is a two-player game, too. You can see at the bottom there. Um, I love the little side art of the hippie dude. <laughs> love it. I also noticed how the basketball kind of looks like the Atari logo, kind of interesting with the patterns there, but yeah, this is a fun game. Uh, it's not bad for a sports game. Oh, I think there's hockey too. Maybe I can't remember, but you'll see it in a minute or no, that's soccer. Yeah. Here's the football cocktail table. Very much like the, uh, like the other one. Um, like baseball. Not a fan of these, but I could tell at the time they were big. Um, back around the time these came out, those little Mattel electronic handheld toys were popular. I had one of those when I was three or four. I didn't know what it did. It just lit up and I hit the buttons, but it was fun for me that way. Here's soccer. I like the side art here too. I like how they did that. I'm not sure if this is exactly the side art. I'm, I'm sure it probably is. Um, I think it looks pretty, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty retro. Of course it was made at the time probably but uh, unless they did it for this but um yeah this is a fun game too i enjoy it i actually played soccer um whenever i was 10 years old in east texas and nine i was in this uh this group called the stompers and my parents made me play now i was a chubby kid back then pre-pubescent chubby kid in east texas heat in the 80s i was not happy I was kicking the ball the wrong way. I my my parents are watching this girl named Tracy who was who became a, a friend of mine, and she had a crush on me at the time, and I was kind of hiding from that. But um, I was remember playing in the heat and I kicking the ball the wrong way. I actually got a third place trophy for that, and um, I displayed it prominently. I don't know where it is now, probably gone. I displayed it prominently. I was so proud of my trophy, um, but. Um, there's some cool arcade cabs here. Definitely check out um, the Vault 2. It offers a lot of variety. And I think it comes free with some or most of the Atari VCS consoles. Um, it came free with mine. So, But I think it's available in the store too to get. So, Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to vote for me for YouTuber of the Month. The Real Bit Wars page for June 2023. Just, so, just say I vote for BCB in that non video. I'll put it below. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a great holiday today if you're off. Um, I appreciate you all. Spend time with your family. Be good to yourself. 
get your Java, be a good person, and go play some freaking Atari. Maybe some Vault 2. We'll see you later, guys. Bye now. You are, you are watching, watching. Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.